want your crunch army? Come on now, where you at? Your motivation guy is back. Okay, so you ever wonder how like really good sweaty players got so good? Well, they probably play one of these creative maps that we're gonna talk about today. All right, so before we start, special thanks to Tito and my main man Raider464, the two creators whose maps that we're gonna be sharing in this video. If you like what you're about to see, you definitely gotta look them up and definitely try this out for sure. Anyways, okay, I'm sure you guys are really eager, so enough of this intro, bunch of your army, let's get this going. Now, if you prefer your training sessions to be efficient, Tito's Season 5 warm-up is your one-stop solution, okay? It's pretty much an all-in-one training map that includes sections for editing and tunneling and peace control movement every day, like edits and peaks and even like a little aim for training, all right? So the first thing is you gotta pick your loadout. We usually just do SCAR, tax shotgun, and an SMG. Occasionally, we get a bit of charge practice in two because missing charge shots when you really need to hit them is like one of the worst things that can ever happen to you. But once you get your loadout, you can just shoot the red dots in the playlist wall to remove sections you don't want. Honestly, I mean, they're all useful, so we suggest just leaving this alone. But if you end up, you know, hating a chorus or something like that, you can always get rid of it. All right, so once you're ready, though, head into the warm-up portal and just start the show, right? The course should take you around 10 to 15 minutes to complete, most of which is pretty self-explanatory. We have more awesome maps to get into, so we won't talk to you to death with the instructions on, on how to complete it. You can just always check it out on Tito's channel for that one. But what we should talk about are the other incredible areas of this map that you gotta access, all right? There's a free building section as well as two aim training sections, one zombie frenzy and the other air tracking. Honestly, these aren't the greatest aim trainers that you can get in Fortnite, at least compared to Skavox, which by the way, you know, we talked about in our advanced training routine video. So check that out if you guys haven't. But what we absolutely loved about this map is the box fight section. This is a solo box fighting simulation against bots, which doesn't sound all that great, but you know, it's actually really well made and surprising surprisingly gives you great practice due to its randomness. And basically, you can just shoot the button to add as many bots as you want, and they're just gonna start spawning at random spots in the grid. And your job, of course, is to act like they're real players you're box fighting against. And that means using right hand peaks where you're not exposed, you know, jump shots on corner edits, peace control to box in the box, and all that kind of stuff. It's really good enough to really train your mechanics while also teaching you how to reduce character model exposure and really get hit less often. And when the builds get too crazy, you can always just reset them with the shot of a button, so it's you know, pretty easy to start off fresh. Overall, I mean, that's what this map really has to offer. Sure, the box fighting section might not be as practical as the real thing, I get it, but if you want you know, a stress-free environment where you can just chill, you know, develop your skills, you definitely gotta check this one out, all right? Also, you guys gotta check out Pro Guides if you're looking for a coach for you know, exclusive tips and tricks from the pros really to help you guys improve and take you to the next level. Our coaches, they're gonna work one-on-one -on -one with you and they're gonna really help transform your game into the player that you wanna be. So just click up here or visit ProGuides.com in the description today. All right, guys, bunch of Crunch Army. Hope you guys are still here. If you want to improve your peace control skills, all you really need is Raiders 464 peace control practice. Raiders, you know, absolutely outdone himself this time. 14 different peace control drills that really sets you up so you can just run them to your heart's content. Now, if you shoot the number for each drill, there's going to be a small explanation as to what to do. So we don't want to go through them all. However, here are some common issues you might encounter and how to fix them. For one, there's crosshair placement. Now, your crosshair placement is crucial when it comes to placing some of the more awkward builds. Okay, for example, like in drills one and two, you need to build and edit a wall and cone the bot on the ramp. If you're aiming in the wrong spot though, you know, your cone's probably gonna just end up placing on the ground. So a quick way to learn where to aim is just really to hold your blueprints out. 
Don't build, just hold it out. You know, move around your mouse and just get a good feel as to where the bounds of the build placement is. For this cone, aiming too low seems to be the main culprit as to why they don't really play. So you just have to make sure you're aiming high enough, okay? Same thing with drills four and five, really. Like a big problem that you might encounter is your walls not placing below. But again, if you hold your blueprints out and you just move around your crosshair, you can just see that you can actually have to aim a lot closer to the ground than it seems like you have to do at first. Okay, so for drill number nine, you're gonna have to just kill one bot, then another one's gonna appear on your right, which you're supposed to just fully box and eliminate as well. The bots won't hurt you, but in real games, Come on now, you already know, they're, they're going to. So when you go to box in an opponent like this, just know that you can actually place the far walls while hugging your left wall for cover. Ideally, this is how you want to do it in real match, right? So we definitely suggest practicing this drill number nine like this. All right, for drill 12, you have to replace a wall from above and place a cone in the box, which a technique a lot of pros, you know, players are actually really using since it's kind of hard to see really coming. But the problem is, is that you know most wall edits actually don't really work too well from this angle, so we suggest doing a large edit where you fully select two columns of the edit tile so you end up with an edit that's just more open and easier for you just to hit your target with. So that's gonna be it for Raiders Peace Control Map. If you run through this every single day, like for a month or so, you're gonna improve so fast, guys. Definitely make this like a part of your life, a part of your routine, if you wanna become a great peace control legend. All right, bunch of crunch army. Peace control techniques are one thing, but, but we always hear that you guys want to improve your editing speed in general, right? Well, sticking with Raider, version four of his edit race is honestly like one of the best maps to use in season five. So what's great about it is that, well, first of all, I mean, there are five different difficulties ranging from easy to impossible. So that no matter what your skill level is, there's something for you to improve your edits with. And second, it's a race. I mean, you can just bring a friend along for some friendly competition, you know, to see who's better. And, you know, who knows? It might even motivate you to really even grind harder. Basically, okay, the easy difficulty contains a lot of single edits like cones and floor, as well as some basic edit resets, mostly for beginners. You know, medium is only a bit more challenging in comparison with double edits, ramp reversals, and more complicated wall resets, all of which are essential to really know. And if you're the type of player that never double edits in a real game, I say like this is the level geared toward you and you should definitely take, you know, a few minutes to really go through it. Now, hard is where things start to get a little toasty around here, right? This time where, you know, there are side jumps and more challenging edits that you have to complete in succession. So your crosshair placement is crucial here. So remember this, my friends, focus on keeping your crosshair movements tight as possible, okay? And that way you can just potentially edit a lot faster. And I know we've mentioned that a lot, you know, like a million times before, but really focusing on crosshair movement is one of the best ways to improve and become a super fast editor. In contrast, okay, very hard is like a doozy, all right? This time, there are multiple triple edits in a row, some quadruple edits too. I mean, it's not too different from hard, just slightly more complicated and probably the limit as to what kind of edit shit they're gonna use in actual games. However, I mean, that doesn't mean like the hardest one impossible difficulty isn't worth doing. I mean, Raider made it as tough as nails and even though you'll probably never get into a scenario that requires that many freaking edits, it's still just really worth just running through it, okay? So you're gonna improve reactions to where it edits and the extreme challenge is definitely gonna help push you to become a better, quicker editor, okay? In summary, I will say this, like it is worth practicing at least one of these sections every day to really improve your muscle memory and your editing speed and definitely bring a friend you know to race with if you could just you know do that with you get the full experience of this map so moving on guys all right training your editing speed is all fine and dandy i get it 
but all the speed in the world will master anything if you don't know how to apply it in the game. And you know, this is where Tito's realistic edits really come in, okay? This is the second version of his map here where he's made a ton of improvements and even spice it up with a bit of more techniques in it. And honestly, there isn't a single move here that is not worth practicing. So why do we love this map so much? Well, let me answer this for you, all right? Well, it's got a convenient layout of pretty much all the major techniques that you're gonna be using in arena and in actual comp matches. I mean, they're really effective techniques. Pro players use them all the time. And this map with its bots and other features makes practicing them just a whole lot easier. So think of it as an encyclopedia of competitive moves. What's also great is that Tito included a fantastic addition in this version as well. Like He added a button that enables peace control mode. So once you turn this on, which you should definitely want to do once you get the hang of it and all these edits, I mean, it is going to destroy all the pre-placed builds. And this is honestly very cool man, since in a real match, you won't have bills already there for you as well, right? So you're gonna have to place them yourself. So this is just better practice, right? You're gonna develop more accurate muscle memory this way, like triple edits, side jumps, and the wall stair floor edit down, which is great. And that's actually a vital part of really learning these techniques that you don't wanna forget about at all. And overall, my friends, like if you're just looking to improve your technique play, and not necessarily your editing speed or anything like that. Include this map in your daily warm up, and you're gonna be fragging out harder than ever. So when it comes to aiming, you know, sensitivity plays a huge role in a fight. And until you find that perfect sensitivity, you know, one that just works for your play style, you know, one that works for your aim and even your building abilities, I mean, they're gonna suffer. And luckily for us, Tito's Sensitivity Finder has a great variety of aiming scenarios that you can use to hone in the right sensitivity, okay? All right, so first thing that you wanna do is check the board of popular settings and make sure your values are somewhere within these ranges. For the most part, I mean, these are the values most pro players use since they're really well balanced for both aiming and building. Although we recommend staying under 50% targeting sensitivity, not many pros go higher, and it just makes hitting long range AR shots tougher than it really needs to be. By the way, okay, if you don't know what DPI is, it's basically your mouse internal sensitivity. Most gaming mice default to 800, but if you download drivers for whatever brand of mouse that you have, you can usually just adjust it to whatever you want. So going from 800 to 400 DPI would, would, you know, would have your sensitivity and 1600 would double it. So that's pretty much how that really works. If this is too complicated, don't worry about it. Just focus on the sensitivities in game, okay? Anyway, Okay, so once you pick some settings as a baseline, okay, head into the hip fire tracking portals first. See how your aim feels with attack SMG. You know, not aiming down sights though. Only hip fire guys. If tracking feels too sluggish and you're having trouble keeping up, you might need to just increase your look sensitivities. And if your crosshair is wild and all over the place, you probably need to just lower it. Increase or decrease in small increments, then test again and repeat until you come to a sense that really just feels natural to you. And if you're happy with your aim, press the a little glow button on the ground to just go back to the lobby and into the free building portal. And this is where you can test how your sense feels with building. So spend some time here, all right? And just try to pick a sensitivity where you can just at least you know, box, box up instantly without it feeling too unnatural or feeling too slow, okay? And you know, once you're happy with your look sensitivity and your building sense, now you want to test your ADS. So head back to the lobby and into the ADS portals, and you're going to probably notice that there there's a little timer button that you can press. And this is essentially a challenge that you can use to just gauge whether a new sensitivity is worse or better than your last one. And there's a target score for each portal. And if you could just reach that score in the time given, then your sensitivity is likely in a very solid spot. All right, so in conclusion, if you're someone who likes to constantly switch sins, you know, depending on how you're feeling that particular day, or maybe you're just swapping to a new mouse or something like that, like, you know, you can use this map as a way to just quickly hop in and just get a better feel where you can just adjust your sensitivity to something more agreeable for you. Bunch of crunch charm. I hope you guys enjoyed the video once again. Man, make sure you like the video, all right? Sub to the channel. When we reach 1 million subscribers, we're gonna be releasing my own story of how 
how your motivation got made it to our map today. All right, so thank you so much again for your support, and we'll see you soon. Peace.